Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Art of Awakening. My name is Ona, and I'm just sharing a, a message for this week that just came through, um, intuitive message for this week. I will also pull a card or two to support the energies of this week of, of January 9th through the 15th, 2022. And so when I tuned in, the uh, image I got first was this beautiful white lily. And um, so let me see if I can show it to you. There we go. And with this came a message. And before I go into the message, um, I feel like this lily is really pointing to the white ray, the white ray of light, uh, which stands for purity. Um, the white ray is one of like the seven rays of light that correspond to seven chakras. Um, seven, of course, is a, is a very mystical number. And so this one corresponds to the heart chakra the white ray. And it's this ray of purity and ascension. It's also the ray of peace. And so as we go through this message, peace is often attained through moving through conflict. So all the messages come through is really talking about conflict and, and some of the things that are necessary in order to move through conflict in a productive way. And it's not always what we want it to be. <laughs> so here's the message. Acknowledge the seed of light within each human being. Each human soul knows from whence it came. It knows who it is. Each soul right now is choosing the path that best suits it at this time. Trust the wisdom of the soul. Trust that each human soul is taken care of, is eternal, and is a light source unto itself, ignited and fueled by the eternal flame. Each soul encounters hardships in its incarnations. These initiations are necessary for the soul's growth and development. Sometimes the soul makes choices that put it in a position to experience initiations. This must be respected, although it can be painful to witness. Let them go and do not let their decisions, do not let other people's decisions sway you. An aligned hierarchy of loyalty is first to universal consciousness, then to higher self, and then to others. Requests or demands made of you by others or a response to the perceived needs of others must be aligned with this order. Universal consciousness, then higher self, then others. When expectations or demands that conflict with the best interests of the higher self come from those we love or respect, this can leave us feeling conflicted. In such cases, it is very important to listen closely to the inner teacher and to define one's own personal boundaries as well as respecting the boundaries of others. Come to stillness if you need to and listen for the still small voice of truth. Disappointing others is not the same as harming them even if they perceive it as such. Betraying your own truth, your own connection to the higher power will always lead to greater harm in the long run. Okay, so that's the message and um, associated with this, this white lily totem here. Um, and what this, as I read through this a couple of times, I, I kept thinking about, there's a couple of quotes from, ascended masters and the first one is from jesus christ and he was instructing his disciples he says do not suppose that i have come to bring peace to the earth i did not come to bring peace but a sword for i've come to turn a man against his father a daughter against her mother a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law a man's enemies will be the members of his own household Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. And okay, so I am looking at this not from a Christian perspective, but of the perspective of, of just more of a universal perspective, okay? And so the way I'm seeing it is that Jesus has so identified with his higher self which is the universal consciousness, the Christ consciousness, right? It's why he's called Jesus Christ, that he is speaking from the point of view of the higher self. And that's why he's saying me, okay? So it doesn't mean that you have to convert to Christianity in order to understand what he's saying here. What he's saying is that, you know, when we follow our higher self, sometimes we might need to... Um, 
you know, we, may lead to conflict with others around us, to loved ones, or with loved ones and so forth, right? And what he's saying is that it's really, you know, if we are going to walk the path of ascension, then we are going to have to hold to what is true for us, hold to our higher self, okay? There's another story with um, the Lord Krishna, and this is comes from the Bhagavad Gita, and he is advising um, the king Arjuna on the battlefield. So Arjuna has come to this point of where he's doing battle and he has to do battle against relatives. And he's really torn up about this, right? He's got to go and fight his loved ones, his relatives, and he doesn't want to do it. And Krishna, who is a counterpart to Jesus Christ, right? He is one that embodies that higher self, is his charioteer. And he's also his advisor, his mentor. And so he he's telling Arjuna that it's really his duty to go into battle. He's got to do it. He says, oh, Arjuna, the Atma. Now, the Atma is like the higher self. It's the soul, right? It's the true self. Oh, Arjuna, the Atma that dwells in the body of all beings is eternally indestructible. Therefore, you should not mourn for any body. Considering also your duty as a warrior, you should not waver because there is nothing more auspicious for a warrior than a righteous war. If you will not fight this righteous war, then you will fail in your duty, lose your reputation and incur sin. Okay, now there's a lot of baggage around words like sin and so forth, um, but the point is the same as the one that Jesus is making. And it's also echoes what the message that came through for me that I spoke earlier is saying is that that each soul is eternal and that the souls have to go through initiations and hardships and that one has to really start to align with one's own inner truth, even if it takes us into conflict with loved ones. And so that's the message for today. This is a hard one. This is a very, very <laughs> challenging, right? Because it is so hard to some you know to, to hold one's too much truth sometimes and especially when it seems like the whole world is against you or the you know your family there may be guilting there may be shaming there may be finger pointing there may be you know a lot of upset people when you start holding to your truth and whether this is you know whether this is just personal things or things that are going on in the greater collective it doesn't matter it's like when you start really you know recognizing your own boundaries which is like your own you know truth what you have to do to stay aligned yourself it's going to it's going to upset people <laughs> it's going to upset people and so so what we're going to ask for here in this reading is just support how can we maintain our own integrity and in a way that is brings as much peace to it as possible right and sometimes sometimes we just cannot like sometimes you it, it's got to just be like either you cut the person out of your life or you leave or you're sometimes you will never come to agreement and it hurts. <laughs> it really hurts. Um, but there comes a point where sometimes we have to choose between, you know, our own truth and whatever else is out there. Okay. And oh my gosh, this is the animal that's coming forward. <laughs> I'm about to cry because this is, this is the, you know, wolf is this beautiful teacher. He's a warrior soul, right? And he is also has this incredible loyalty. Wolf pack has this hierarchy within it, right? And each individual wolf knows its place, right? It knows its place in the hierarchy and they work together. Um, sometimes there will be a lone wolf that comes in that is not part of the pack, right? And you can look at it either way, right? Sometimes if you can look at it as a pack of wolves that has this established hierarchy, and if, you know, if that doesn't align with you, they can you know, try to rip you off, 
and wolf, the lone wolf has to go in its own way. On the other hand, you know, we can also look at it as knowing one's place within the natural hierarchy. Okay, what's the natural hierarchy and being able to work within that and then, you know, then and being able to, you know, wolf is a fierce warrior <laughs> and he also knows his path, right? So um, some of the things that wolf really teaches us is the importance of family and, and the importance of, uh, you know, um, tradition and the ancestral, I guess the ancestral traditions that are really in, alignment, any kind of tradition that's in alignment, a wolf is going to be um, very much, that's part of wolf me medicine. So sometimes if we're in this position where we're in conflict with our own family, wolf is a great one to bring up because, you know, a wolf can help us to find our spiritual family. And this may be ancestors that you connect with, this may be others who you know, you recognize the soul brothers and sisters. This is a time where sometimes it's, you know, this. sometimes we have to just either agree to, I mean, you know, with our blood families or, or existing friends or whatever, it may come to a point where you either have to agree to not talk about certain subjects or you have to part ways and that's just the way it is, but we all have soul families that we can connect with. So looking for those soul brothers and sisters that you can find that get, you know, where you're coming from that will respect you when you speak your truth, um, that's super important. And though they're here, even if you feel like you're completely, totally alone in the world, you are not. You have a soul family and they're out there. It's just a matter of really feeling, raising your vibration and you will magnetically begin to attract them if you haven't already. Okay, so um, I just want to let you know about one little thing, if you're catching this video right away, um, this is on Sunday, January 9th. I do have a spirit animal question and answer open house. We'll be doing a little meditation to connect with a spirit animal and then just kind of opening it up to whatever questions you want to bring that will be live via Zoom. You do have to register. I'm going to put that registration link in the description below. It's at 4 p.m. Eastern. If you don't catch it, um, I may be uh, sending out the, or posting the replay later. So look for that or at least portions of it. And um, then also this particular message uh, today, this video, uh, really resonates it it connects a lot to the first hermetic principle the principle of um, mentalism or divine oneness and so look for a video soon i'll be trying to upload one within a week or two about that right so take care and know that you are very much loved and remember you were born to be free <laughs>